All right, a quick exercise, which we won't actually do as an exercise, but think about we're in a classroom and we're sitting together and we want to organize a class. Now we could do this by say organizational size. It's a ordered list of groups, say, you know, people who have more than 10,000 employees, 10 to 5,000, 5,000 to 1,000, so on and so forth. Or, or maybe we do it by geographic location. Uh, so United States and maybe the state you're in and maybe major cities and that sort of thing. Well, what about my industry? Well, I don't know what industry you're in, but maybe you're in professional services or you're in manufacturing or healthcare or the government. What about by role? Maybe we could organize our virtual classroom here by what role you have in the organization. Are you the CEO, CIO, director, manager, supervisor, grunt? Hopefully they don't call you a grunt. Um, maybe we could order our, our class, our virtual class here for by gender or height or ethnicity or heck for by first name and last name. I know when I was a kid, sometimes we'd get sorted in the classroom by last name, which is always annoying. I was B, so I was always up in front. Um, what about ages? And we could, you know, maybe make ranges of one to 18 or zero to 18. Although if you're a toddler and you're listening to this, it's kind of weird. Um, maybe, maybe it's the objective, what you want to get from the course. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of ways that we could organize this virtual classroom, but the reality is most of them don't matter. So our goal here, as we're talking about information architecture, is to focus you in on the things that matter to help you figure out which things are useful and which ones aren't. Let's take a look at the different modules in the course, and we can take a look at how we'll help you through that process.